This is a webinar that I think this is one of the areas that we really feel is very, very important that we, we get the facts about uh, uh, payment processing. Uh, and we see a lot of um, a lot of questions in this area, and sometimes uh, you know we get delayed in getting a booking website online because somebody says it's not uh, it is not secure things like that. Where we'll be processing hundreds of cards a day, uh, literally you know thousands and uh, you know like. Uh, uh, you know, in the over period, period of a week, uh, once a week, we you know we do a report and we see like thousands of transactions running through. So we felt it's important that we really start uh, addressing these issues through webinars so we can get a better understanding of how things work. So we're we'll just get started. Uh, I also have um, I have Todd uh, who was part of the um, gallery merchants that will be able to uh, share with us more of a, a you know insight in terms of. Uh, uh, what happens in the whole credit card traditional model. Uh, the other thing that we want to cover also is authorized.net and uh, the gateway part of it. And then we also want to cover uh, something called Stripe. Uh, we've been uh, we've been working with Stripe just the uh, last few months and there's been a lot of interest. We've been having a lot of requests for Stripe for probably several months and we just integrated with them about uh, three or four months back. Uh, and uh, we've been kind of signing up some of the newer people on on Stripe account. So these are the three things that we want to cover in this webinar. Just basically, um, you know, addressing questions in terms of payment processing, and then I'll have Todd share a little bit more from a traditional perspective of what happens when we do a merchant account and uh, what happens when we um, uh, when we uh, when we try to sign up with a merchant account. And actually, easy in keeping. Uh, you know, we try to keep it seamless within the product so that. People coming online can make a reservation on their website and then boom, it automatically takes the credit confirmation and processes it through. Um, and so uh, we want to, um, you know, address some of any questions you might have or how easy in keeping does things, you know. Uh, sometimes people have questions about refunds and, uh, you know, cancellation charges, things like that. So we'll talk about that. I'll have Bobby maybe share a little bit more about that. Okay. Uh, so, if, and also if you have any, anyone has questions, maybe when we finish a specific point, specific slide we can just uh, feel free to just jump in and ask any questions and we are recording this webinar um, because uh, I got some few requests asking that you know if we can record it then we can make it available for other people all right so um, so let me just uh, step into this right away all right there it is okay so basically if you look at a traditional merchant account platform a um, lot of times you know uh, we talk about gateway. So the gateway that we connect with is called authorized.net. That's been our preferred gateway. We also connect with a gateway called CC Avenue, uh, which is uh, mostly used in Asia. Uh, but authorized.net pretty much works uh, in uh, North America, and I'll show you a little bit uh, the countries it works with. Um, but uh, we have worked with authorized.net over 10 years, you know, so we've had a long relationship with them. Um, they used to be uh, very, uh, um, you know, very easy to work with. Their, uh, so, you know, their, their, sir, the reseller department is very good in terms of support and things like that. So we like working with Authorized or Net, and uh, sometimes we try to uh, steer uh, people towards Authorized or Net because of their support and also because of the longevity. You know, uh, many years back uh, we first worked with another company um, that was a gateway. And uh, so, you know, we actually met with them personally and we started it and then um, then suddenly something happened. We had a crisis and then we called them. We couldn't get through to these guys. That really scared us. You know, it's like, wow, you know, here's money we're putting into this account. We don't know. So and we are bringing customers. So that's why we just said, no, we're going to go uh, with a standardized company. Authorization is probably one of the largest gateway, um, uh, you know, in America. So so the gateway kind of sits in between. Uh, between the merchant account and the credit card. So here is your your account um, and the credit card uh, company right here. So if you look at this, this are you able to see my mouse pointer? Pointing? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So what happens, the, uh, so what we do is the PMS sits, you know, when, when somebody comes online, let's just look at two different um, uh, scenarios. One is the credit card, uh, somebody is coming onto your website, makes a booking on your website, okay? When you make a booking on a website, then what happens is we take the credit card information and then we push it to authorized.net. So we push it right to this gateway, to, uh, to authorized.net. And then what happens is authorized.net 
it basically takes care of all the details in terms of taking the credit confirmation, validating, making sure that there's card in them, um, the address is valid, uh, there's money in the account, and then it uh, sends back an information to us saying that the card is valid. It is a good card and you can process this uh, reservation through. So that's only that's the only time that we will send the reservation to the next step, okay? So we'll say, okay, yes, the credit card's good. Here's the transaction ID. We get a transaction ID directly from authorized.net and we think, we say, okay, the, the money's move, moving forward. So we process the credit card, uh, we process the, tra the reservation and we go to the next page, which is the confirmation page, okay? That's, a, that's in a typical online reservation system, okay? But uh, if in case uh, there was an error, for instance, the address do not uh, match, um, this is a very common question that we get, especially when people have uh, when people have guests from you know let's just say Europe or different parts of the world. Then a lot of times we have some problems because if they have an AVS check, the address verification check, the address verification check on AuthorizeNet will make sure that everything matches. Like you know you need to match your uh, the address, your you know the door number and the zip code, and so if it doesn't match, it will throw an error. So we end up getting a lot of errors so we usually tell our customers like hey la, don't don't have the abs check you know on so that if the address is not you know in terms of it's not accurate it still go through you know uh so maybe todd when you are talking you can maybe kind of address that as well okay so so that's sure. uh we have the abs check you know we tell them don't do that and also since it's a credit um the card is not present it's coming online we have an account called the card card not present account which would be the way that we we process authorized uh, uh, accounts you know so traditionally we, that's what we've done we've always um had one account we tell our clients just set up a credit card not present account so you can use it for your online transaction and then um and also since our website you know when you when somebody walks in and does uh, um, you know walks in with their credit card information they can give you the credit card at the front desk and boom you can take that credit card information we have a swipe card device called it's a mac tech reader basically it's a simple device that goes on the side of a computer you swipe it all it does is really push the data of the credit card into the software it really doesn't do anything uh, other than that it's just like a, a smart reader that just reads the credit card information and it pushes to the software and then you click on process now and then it processes the credit card and it still goes through the same card not present account uh, we kind of standardize on that one um, because people have to do two separate accounts if they have to do one card present and another one card not present it was creating more confusion and we just said okay let's just do one account and we from our research we talked to the authorized or net and they said there's not a lot of difference financially you know if they're doing a card not present we can just keep the same account information all right so that's uh, so that kind of happens right here and the and the payment gateway authorized net pushes the what whatever the money that needs to go to uh, authorized uh, authorized net pushes it to uh, takes care of the visa card mastercard payment information and then it pushes to your merchant account and the merchant account eventually comes down to your bank account okay and uh, and i want to just address uh, one of the question here we get this question very often uh, people think that uh, you know um, that you can just walk in your bank and just uh, you know get a merchant account and it's really not the case because a lot of the banks they actually have a, almost like a separate department or a separate company that runs their merchant processor and uh, you know i was just talking to todd about it maybe he can address that as well why uh, we why most banks or most um, you know, most uh, companies have a separate merchant processor department or separate merchant processor company to deal with these, um, you know, merchant accounts. Okay. All right. Any questions on this so far? Okay. So I'm going to keep uh, keep uh, going uh, down the down the line uh we're going to just uh, take a few minutes and just uh talk about the traditional merchant account model this is what i was telling you about you know you have a merchant account that's connected to your bank and then you know the there's a gateway uh sometimes i tell the people the gateway is nothing but like a machine um you know just like your swipe machine that you would use um in a traditional restaurant you know you you get a machine from your bank or a merchant account um the merchant processor it's just like that except it's not a physical machine now everything has gone virtual so that's why they call it virtual terminal or virtual uh, um gateway you know so it's basically it's just a it, uh, it's just a replacement of what normally people would do 
um, with the actual machine. Now we are doing everything online. Okay. Um, so this is the traditional merchant uh, merchant account. Maybe Todd, you can jump in about this point. Uh, give me one second. Hold on, Bobby. Do you have anything you want to uh, share at this point? Or? No. Okay. Not at this point. You're covering it well. So so we'll go ahead and and um, um, uh, we'll just kind of go ahead and and uh, have Todd. Uh, Todd's company is called Payments Gallery. Uh, they're based in Houston. Um, uh, so we just uh, felt it would be good to get some information from uh, somebody that's doing this day in and day out from the merchant side, uh, from the processor side. Todd, just jump in, please. And if there's any questions, guys, we can uh, we can ask Todd as well. Go ahead. Great. Uh, thank you, Gideon, for having me on the conference call today. Glad to be of assistance for this. And um, so uh, you're right. I think you've done a great job in explaining just the kind of the process of how this all works. And traditional merchant accounts are uh, something that have been around for a very long time. The reason we refer to them as traditional now is because um, as the payments industry has continued to evolve, there are a lot of new products or what they call fintech uh, companies that have come to market. And um, a lot of them are recognized as like PayPal. Uh, that one's been around for quite some time. Uh, Gideon had already mentioned Stripe. Basically what happens is these are very large companies that aggregate a lot of small accounts under a master merchant account. And that's why they call it aggregation. And so what happens with a traditional merchant account, the reason the fees are a lot different is because um, a business is getting a direct merchant account with a particular payment processor in that case. And so that's where things like PCI compliance come into play, uh, separate reporting, maybe a different user interface or a dashboard, uh, the rates and the fees based on the business risk and the model and things like that all come into play. Whereas the difference with an aggregator model is um, that particular large company is just having um, one account under uh, a massive, probably thousands and thousands of other merchant accounts. And what they're doing is they're leveraging the risk and the security across their entire platform. And that's why in most cases with an aggregator model, you have uh, two rates. Usually there's a card present rate and a card not present rate. Uh, we basically call that kind of a tiered pricing model. Um, so with this particular slide here, um, Gideon's right, um, a, a traditional merchant account, if you have the right provider that's handling it for you, you're going to have a much higher level of customer service and experience. That's just what's built into that particular model. Um, there's going to be a lot more communication with it, uh, particularly if your provider is good. They're going to try to help you steer away from chargebacks, customer disputes, uh, risky or dangerous transactions. Um, depending on the size of your operation and your, your types of transactions you're running, um, there can be some room to negotiate. Um, my partner and I with Payments Gallery here in Houston, uh, we've been in the industry for over 15 years individually, and so we specialize in kind of the hard-to-place um, accounts. Uh, we work with brokering, understanding the business owner, direction and vision, and then what we do is we put ourselves in your shoes and um, try to get you the best rates because we're not really loyal to any particular bank or institution, uh, whereas if you walk into your standard bank like Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, they're more interested in posting results on Wall Street uh, and they're going to try to make as much profit on the account as they can, whereas our philosophy is a little bit different with that. So um, the last bullet point there is uh, rates can be based on volume of sales. Um, that is correct. Uh, the great thing, too, is when you do work with a broker such as ourselves, um, we know some of the inside secrets to be able to negotiate. Um, uh, there are fees that are uh, the same across all you know, industries or types of transactions, but then there are a lot of what we call um, kind of junk fees or add-on fees where uh, certain processors or relationships will um, try to add uh, more profitability into the account, and in most cases, they're not needed. And so um, the great thing with what Gideon's uh, team is doing is Authorize.net, you know, not only is it an industry standard payment gateway, it's very robust. Um, they're constantly working on innovation, and then um, it's just a matter of plugging in the preference of the traditional merchant account into that solution then. Um, I hope that summarizes it. Uh, did anybody have any questions based on that overview then? Any question? Just jump in, please. But I think Todd, that's a that's a good summary, Todd. You know, and uh, okay, this really, uh, you know, it really um, points to the where everything matters. You know, what my, when money comes in, if it comes in like three days from now versus the next day, makes a huge difference. You know, 
So we've seen that, you know, some customers we've had to, uh, you know, certain things don't happen like next day. So they have to negotiate, things like that. So having someone like a, a processor really helps us to make sure that we get the money right away as soon as you can, things like that, you know. And uh, contrasting what Todd was saying, <coughs> you know, Todd, you were talking about this uh, different fees. And, I, and one thing that we've heard from the clients in the last uh, year or so, you know, since Tribe and... Uh, What's the other company, Bobby? Um, no, no, the other. Um, uh, Square. Square, Square. Square and Stripe uh, have been, you know, been big on the news, you know. Um, and one thing that we are we are finding that people are going towards <coughs> these companies because they just have a, they, there's no per month transaction. They don't care about uh, card present or card not present. They don't care about anything. They just say flat fee, you know. Uh, so it's like nine for five percent, and then it's like a thirty cents per transaction, um, and that's it. You know, so they so you can do one transaction or you can do one thousand transaction a month. It doesn't matter. So you're paying for the same. Uh, so that's one of the reasons uh, we are finding um, that is much more simpler to get people up and running right away with a provider like Stripe. You know, so and our programming that we have done with Stripe is you know. Um, has been, uh, you know, very, I mean, they have, you know, pretty nice technology in terms of, you know, uh, how things are being done. So we are doing some internal things to work with uh, seamlessly so that, uh, you know, you can do everything online with Stripe, you know, boom, come in and come Yeah, and those are all really good points. And that's one of the things, too, specifically from like a risk and underwriting model. If um, one of your clients is working with, um, say, for example, a lot more international transactions, uh, you know, maybe we're here in, you know, Houston and Texas, we have a lot of international transactions coming through just being close to the border. But um, Stripe does a good job of helping filter the risk and um, uh, the types of reward with those types of transactions. And so um, having international transactions through a traditional merchant account can sometimes present some challenges. And so in that case, uh, Stripe could be a really good solution. Uh, the other thing, and you had touched on this too, and I, I should have mentioned it as well, but um, there's some differences in how the funding windows work between a traditional merchant account and also an aggregator. So typically an aggregator will take their fees out ahead of time before they do any deposit into the business checking account. And some business owners really find that frustrating or hard to track because they have to kind of recreate their transaction to see how many sales they actually ran in a given cycle. And so a lot of it depends on the robustness of the reporting. Now, uh, with a traditional merchant account, uh, in most cases, um, if you have a company that's working with you advantageously, you can request what's called gross deposits, meaning if you have a $100 sale come through for the day, uh, you would get that $100 into your bank account. And then what they would do is a billing cycle at the end of the month for all the fees. And so then it's just a single debit uh, as opposed to taking a percentage out of each transaction, which can kind of be a little complicating in that case. Okay. And then um, with the funding window too, uh, most people don't realize, but a traditional merchant account operates within uh, typical banking days. So that's Monday through Friday. Most processors don't move money on weekends or holidays. But what's going to be the biggest caveat is um, where the uh, cutoff time is for that particular processing platform. So the advantage of authorize.net is that can be set at any point during the day. That's a setting on the back end of that console. And so if you want to run your reservations through 1159 uh, in the evening, you could do that. But if you say, you know what, we want to get funded faster and we want to have our cutoff at, you know, a, a shift change or three or four o'clock in the afternoon, technically you could speed up your funding by getting it in uh, to the processor faster and having that batch cycle closed too. So there's some strategy, you know, depending on how people need to manage your cash flow in that regard as well. In terms of, uh, you know, for our clients, basically we have our cutoff time that we have, uh, we uh, that we uh, basically are pushing is about six o'clock um, CST. So I think it's 5 p.m. Um, Eastern time that we, uh, um, sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern time that the the transactions are being uh, batched you know so any transaction you do during the day uh, if you run anything through easy inkeeping or through the online booking engine all the transactions from easy inkeeping gets uh, gets you know accumulated on the back end of authorized.net at 6 p.m. then it gets batched out at that point so till then really uh, the money is really not moving and actually what happens is so in in easy inkeeping if you want to do a refund or if you want to do uh, any changes, you can actually just uh, do a delete. Uh, the right button uh, on the 
Yeah, if it hasn't batched, you just delete it out of the billing screen of the reservation and it will void the transaction. And it'll tell you, are you sure you want to void this transaction? You click OK and it will it will just go away. Yeah. So but if in sometimes, like, you know, let's just say you need to do a refund, um, then you would, you know, you basically would need to uh, you can do a refund till it's batched. So basically, if you're doing a refund, sometimes people are trying to do a refund. It's like, well, can't do a refund. Uh, why is it not refunding? but actually the it's still not batched from so it's the still the money's in the queue you know so it's not uh, gone out so basically you need to do if you're doing refunds it's got to be the very next day okay uh just That's correct yeah you explained it really well because avoid would be a transaction in the current batch whereas a refund would be after it's batched yeah, yeah. right so this is kind of uh you know just kind of running through authorized net you know um you know, it's pretty standard. We've been working with authorized net, but uh, Stripe is something new that we've been working with. I actually, uh, we were going to have somebody from Stripe also on the call, uh, just to kind of give us uh, give us their idea. You know, you know how they're working, but we were not able to uh, uh, get them on this call. But hopefully, we'll uh, we'll do another uh, another webinar where we will be able to ha also have a Stripe uh, person. I'll be able to kind of explain. Uh, you know this new ideas new phenomenon of course there's uh, risks to it uh, but also there's also um, simplicity I guess you know I guess that's what uh, smaller BNB small properties that have five rooms you know uh, you know if you have five uh, ten rooms you know people are you know want to get something up and running quickly we've seen people just say hey let me just put me on stripe boom you know they're you know so it goes pretty fast um, authorized.net generally uh, if you just do a gateway account you know it takes about two days uh, to you know get you need to basically give a give a var sheet that you need to get from your merchant account and, and uh, give it to authorizer net they really um, made it much more simpler than what it was five years back um, but it's uh, you know uh, but it still takes about a couple days you know if you want to do a whole merchant account uh, generally ta uh, Todd how long does it take uh, if somebody wants to do a merchant account with you guys um, that's going to kind of vary depending on the platform that we have to go with and a couple other variables. I tell people, um, you know, and they get surprised on this because they're like, well, I really needed a merchant account yesterday and they're trying to go into their bank, like you said, and get one set up, you know, the same day or whatever. Uh, most banks usually take four to five business days. Um, we've optimized the process where in most cases we can have a live merchant ID number within about two to three but that's assuming that um, the business owner has all their documentation ready, their EIN is ready to go, they've got a voided check set up on their bank account. And so if we get going down the documentation phase and we find out that any of that stuff is missing, that's obviously outside of our control and that can delay it a little bit longer. But um, in most cases, we're very efficient and then uh, we know exactly what we need on a per provider basis. And so it just saves everybody time that way. Yeah. So that's good, yeah. So generally, you need to give in time for that. So when usually when customers come and say, "Hey, we we need to get up and running," um, and then they say, "We need to uh, we need to get a merchant account set up." Usually, we just don't know. It's just uh, you know we can easy in keeping. We can set up quickly up and running. Um, you know, for a you know let's just say like a twenty twenty five room property, you can up up and running in a day. But uh, if you need to um, you know do the merchant side of it, the online side of things, of course that's going to take time. So. So we kind of have always need to kind of you know refer that, and then here if you look at this one, it uh, authorizer net works with um, uh, you know in different countries right now. They're working in you know uh, Canada, you know UK, Europe, and Australia. Uh, the last few years they added uh, more Australia and Europe, I believe. Um, but traditionally, you know, they're very uh, in terms of the um, you know they're pretty uh, standard company to work with. Okay, let's keep going down here. Um, Okay, hello. Okay, let me check. There it is. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the aggregator merchant model that um, uh, Todd already talked about. PayPal and Stripe are the two things that we offer. We do. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we offer PayPal and Stripe, uh, but I think uh, you know Stripe has gotten more a lot of press, and you know uh, they're newer in the market, but uh, they've gotten you know they've gotten pretty big uh, last few years. I believe the the original founders are from uh, from somewhere in Europe, um, but they're uh, you know the technology is pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we kind of uh, looked at it uh, when we did the initial. Uh, I looked at the way they're doing all their um, transactions, processing things like that. It's uh, pretty easy to get things up and running. That's one of the 
uh, one of the plus points about uh, you know Stripe. Uh, you know, with with PayPal, we have not really seen. We have offered PayPal for many years. Uh, we have not seen any um, any any increase in that. It's you know very few people use PayPal, uh, at least for us. You know, um, it seems like a little bit more. Uh, uh, headache, I guess, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, um, Not bashing paper, but I'm just saying it was great when it opened up But I think in terms of usability working with uh, working with someone like a, a Technology company like us that's pushing things underneath the layer. Um, it's not been so um, uh, You know so user-friendly they have a lot of lot of options for instance, but you know like if we'll for an MLM company like a multi uh, layer company you can take a payment and put it into 10 different slots and send it different ways um, You know things like that, you know, we had to do something like that for a client in Thailand uh, So those are different options as there, but for a traditional for a uh, for a regular uh, property, I think uh, PayPal has not been that great of a uh, strategy, but I, I feel like you know definitely uh, you know the regular standard merchant model and of course the stripe with the new way We're doing things with stripe also has, has been good um, good um, uh, Ways to move forward, you know, and I think uh, I think it was pretty clear what Todd explained how the merch the aggregate merchant model works You know how they can pull everything together and uh, being able to offer this kind of pricing uh, without uh, you know not needing to worry about what type of a transaction uh, card present, card not present, things like that, you know. Uh, so those are the new things. Any questions on this? Uh, so, Gideon, I was going to just uh, expand on one other thing there, too. Uh, based on the last bullet point you're showing on the screen here, good choice for startup businesses or hotels based out of uh, the U.S. So um, I would definitely echo that. A lot of times, you know, one of the most frequently asked questions we get um, as a uh, payments company is to say, hey, um, you know, when it comes to fees, I mean, should I go with something like PayPal or Stripe or Square, or should I just start out with a traditional merchant account? And um, our answer to that really kind of directs it back to the business owner, because at the end of the day, it's a fork in the road. Um, PayPal, Stripe, and um, Square tend to be what we call self-driven solutions, or there's a uh, learning curve with it. Um, and it's just kind of a self-directed payment mechanism. So if a business owner is technically savvy, if they feel like they can spend the time learning how to use the system, uh, they may not necessarily be doing all the programming. They would leave that up to you guys. But um, all things considered, if they, if they say, you know what, having a level of customer service to reach somebody on the phone when I have questions, that's not a really big deal for me. Um, I'm really price sensitive. Then I would definitely say PayPal, Stripe, or Square um, is a good startup option. Now, uh, we frequently crunch the math on this, and uh, typically when a business's sales, um, it, it varies from company to company and business model, but usually right around the $4,000 to $5,000 a month in uh, total sales volume is where you really start to get a breakdown on Stripe and PayPal and maybe Square not being good solutions for business because the more volume you actually push through a traditional merchant account, the lower your rates can actually get um, just because it's offsetting other fees. And then um, the advantage of that is you're going to have a provider that's actually responsive with customer service and uh, things like that. And so, um, you know, for those people that have just kind of the occasional bedroom uh, that they're, you know, booking here and there, they're kind of a hobbyist at it. They're going to say, hey, I don't know if I really want to turn this into a business model. In most cases, I would say it would probably be better for those people just to go ahead and set up something very simple like Stripe. Uh, and once you really get your business uh, with traction and, and uh, you're, you're off and running and you're making the sales and, and you're getting better at it, then you can always upgrade into a traditional merchant account later on or add that as a, an alternative option down the road too then. And actually, that's kind of something that we've been, uh, you know, some of the newer people, especially, you know, we have, um, you know, just in the last week, we had two new properties. Uh, that just signed up uh, and they're basically they're uh, one of the properties was actually a existing property I think probably 40 50 rooms um, but there's a new owner you know and so he wanted something up and running right away and we said hey just jump on stripe you know get used to you know and in terms of uh, what we've done with stripe is we've kind of like taken a lot of the programming out um, out of um, out of the stripe and into the system itself so basically uh, we, you know, our, our reporting should be sufficient enough uh, to be able to say, okay, every day you can run a payment uh, settlement report, see what's coming in, you know. 
Um, and so some of those things like that we've done uh, that will be able to work with Stripe. But this is a typical scenario. We just had a property just sign up, you know, that was an existing property, but somebody, a new owner comes in. We told him if you want to get up and running right away, and he was, he, I mean, he doesn't know much about it, the uh, account information, I mean, on the whole, the merchant side. So he's up and running on Stripe. And then once you get a feel for it, you can see what you're paying in terms of your, your um, what you're paying at the end of, let's just say, after three months, you see, oh, wow, I'm paying this much. Then you can easily go back to a traditional system and say, okay, let me see if I can get a better deal. And uh, being able to kind of work out a, uh, you know, a better better numbers with the traditional model, you know, and uh, I think uh, that would be a that would be probably the what we would suggest, you know, people that are just coming in new that want to just get something up and running quickly, and uh, and also people that uh, you know, one of the things that you know if we are not comfortable with you know all this monthly fees and everything, and uh, and always there's a little bit of. Uh, uh, ups and downs in terms of the not knowing exactly what kind of transaction uh, payment, what kind of commission they'll be paying, or what kind of a per transaction payment they're going to be paying. But of course, as Tad, Todd mentioned, you know, the more you process, the better um, you know rates you get, and your you know your fees go down. So definitely, these are a couple of different models that we have. I have one more slide. I'll just show this here. So these are um, kind of some of the public domain stuff that we were able to pull out. You know. Uh, that shows the different merchant models. I'm going to have this uh, P, uh, PPT available, um, you know, on our uh, on our blog, and also this, uh, um, you know, I'll put the actual video uh, of this presentation as well on the blog, so people can uh, download it and take a look at it. Um, so anyway, just uh, we just want to kind of just give a high level overview. Um, we'll probably start um, uh, maybe trying to uh, do another one. Uh, you know, maybe in the next month or so and just trying to get a little bit more details and find out what questions we need to address uh, in terms of how things work and what can we do from a from a software perspective to make things easy for our customers to get started with the payment platform. Any questions, uh, any questions to from anybody? So we have about eight of us on the call. Uh, no questions. Well, if you don't have any questions, you have a very educated audience. So I congratulate <laughs> you on. <informed. laughs> I was going to say for the record here too, as uh, we're wrapping this up, um, for you know people that are either on the call right now or um, that will be listening, you know, on a future uh, session or even downloading this and watching this video later on. Uh, my partner and I, we're available uh, to do a cost analysis. So if you feel like you're a business owner that's in that, um, you know, kind of midway position, like, um, okay, I'm already using some of these other technologies. Uh, should I look at a, adding a traditional merchant account? Um, we'll do that uh, for you at no cost. We'll run the numbers and come back with some suggestions or some strategies. And then on the same token too, if you've been using an account with, uh, you know, a big bank, uh, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, um, or just any standard merchant account, uh, we're more than happy to do that for you as well. Because a lot of times if you haven't um, gone back and revisited um, a merchant account in a you know a couple years since it started. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in the industry as a, overall, and it would be good to just kind of pinpoint to see if there's any way to trim fees or uh, make some suggestions on that. And so, uh, because of our relationship with Gideon and his team, uh, we're glad to offer that at no cost uh, to any of the client base, just as an additional courtesy in that regard. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Todd. But definitely, everyone. I think uh, what we are seeing is that. Uh, because of the increased competition in terms of these new pay, new PayPal, Stripe, and all this, you know, really coming in, taking traditional business, there's a lot more, a um, lot more competitiveness. You know, even Authorized or Net dropped the fees for us. Uh, you know, it's, it used to be, I don't know, $15 a month. I don't know exactly, Bobby, what did the they've dropped the fees? You know, for uh, for our clients. You know, so there's definitely, uh, um, you know. Um, so we can definitely do that, you know. And uh, Todd, what's the website, your website, Todd? Um, our website is paymentsgallery.com. Uh, that's payments with an S and then gallery, G-A-L-L-E-R-Y.com. And our email address is service at paymentsgallery.com. And guys, you can always, uh, you know, email Bobby or, um, you know, sales or USA support 
at graceout.com and then we'll be able to connect you with uh, Todd and their team. Uh, you know, I uh, had, a, I think maybe last month, I had one of the clients actually talk to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to um, Todd's partner, Tim, you know, so definitely I think, uh, you know, we want to, uh, as things are getting competitive, we need to be, uh, you know, we need to see what's the best thing we can do, you know, to get the best rates. Okay. Absolutely. Glad to help with that. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Anybody? Any? Uh, Dixie, you always have a question. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Say it again. She said not today. Not today. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being on this call. And, uh, uh, you know, just keep us uh, posted with any questions, and we'll be uh, more than happy to connect you with Todd. And uh, maybe the next uh, step, we can maybe take you to the next level. Uh, get some actual stats and things like that, you know, so we'll work with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Todd, for your time and joining us on this call. Sure, no problem. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye, right. guys. Bye, guys. All right. Take care.